Well, today is Sunday, the day before Memorial Day, and we spent all day yesterday, Saturday, cleaning up the yard. We got a break in the weather, so we took advantage of it. We mowed and weed eat and everything, everything squared away. Just in time for more bad weather, which is supposed to arrive here in the next couple hours, coming out of Texas. Lots and lots of rain. Oh, man. In addition to cleaning up the yard, I spent the latter half of the afternoon yesterday tying up all of the different uh, shoots off the tomato plants all the way along here because I knew we were going to have more rain. I just knew it, and sure enough, there it comes. I got lots of things tied up here, a lot mega, mega trellis clips all over the place. I'm, like I told you, if you remember, I, I bought a hundred of them, and I just about used them all. The potato plants are doing real good. I also installed support poles in the center here so when the time comes when the scalding hot sun begins to beat down in Arkansas I can get this hoop house plastic up and I'll have plenty of support even though it rains I put uh, one two three and four all I did was set them on these uh, cement things and then uh, over here I just drilled holes and put these heavy ties through it that way I can go ahead and remove it I didn't want to drill any more holes in this thin wood it would make it kind of weak. I was going to initially put two screws down in there, but I said, nah, that'll kind of weaken it up. So I went with it this way. The board can handle it, and all I have to do is, you know, when I'm, if I ever want to take them out, just cut it. Everything's good to go. I don't think I'll be taking them out, though. But anyway, we went ahead and tied everything up. Everything is tied. So we'll see how the storm goes. I'm just going to wait and see, and I might give you a little film of it. And here it comes. There's old Conway right there. And it'll be here in a couple of minutes. Gosh, just one after another. Let's back up here and see what all we got. Man, alive. They got a quite a bit of it up the northwestern corner. Well, she finally hit. So far, not, we don't have any big wind, but boy, do we have the rain. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, well, plants look like they're holding up well. I'm glad I put the time into that. It won't be long and we'll be blasted again. Unbelievable. Look at the color of those storm clouds coming our it, They'll be here in about 20 minutes. Oh, man. What a springtime this has been. Our storm last night was pretty rough. You can see from our, our big old tree branches that were broken out of the trees. But I'm happy to say that not one tomato plant stalk was busted because I had them all tied up real good. Today's the 29th of May, Friday. And my son will be picking me up in a couple of hours and we'll be heading off to Mesquite, Texas for the karate tournament. But I thought I'd come out in the garden early in the morning and take a look and see what's going on. We had another, you know, blasting rain yesterday. Uh, and look. Uh, Look what I have right here. Oh my goodness, I actually have a radish and we're gonna pull that baby and take a look at it. Ooh, look at there, a whole radish. <laughs> I got another one over here. I thought I'd let you see me harvest my first two radishes. In fact, I thought I'd let you see me harvest my only two radishes. <laughs> well, that's it. That is supposed to be my radish crop for the year. Oh, what a miserable failure. <laughs> Well, the old eggplant's gone to pot. I don't, I don't know what happened. We got plenty of nice blooms on our eggplant, and then all of a sudden our leaves started doing all this crap. Uh, we got a couple of blooms right there, but they're not, they're not going to amount to anything. They're just shriveling up and dying, I guess. I don't know. Really weird. Strange. But like I said, I'll harvest what I can this year out of the garden and not worry about it. You know, we'll just change, do a little change up next year. The old cucumbers have blooms all over them. Not a single cucumber, though. <laughs> Lots of flowers. Flowers are everywhere. There's some more right there. And some more over there. Not a single cucumber. I, can't, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It looks good. It's just not putting out any fruit. <laughs> yeah, the old bell peppers are shot. They're all turning black on the edge. I'm going to pull these up when I get back from Mesquite. I have four brand new ones. Wifey bought me the other day. We're going to pull all of these... Uh, bell pepper plants up and replant we're going to need it's the bacteria caused by too much water is just take every single plants turning totally black look at this one they're, they're just no good 
Look at this thing, got nice blooms on it and everything. But they're all turning black. No good. The tomatoes are going great guns, no problem. We got plenty of tomatoes on the plants. And uh, some of them are you know, some of them are that big already. So no problem with the tomatoes. I just keep I just keep fertilizing them and doing what I need to do. The potatoes, you know, lots lots of foliage. I don't know what we're gonna have once we dig up the pot. We'll be digging it up in about we'll dig up our first pot in about 30 days. Somewhere around July the fourth. Here's a couple of those tomatoes I was telling you about. They're doing real good. We're, we've got a really nice bunch of tomatoes right there. I got plenty like this everywhere. We're going to have no problem with the tomatoes as long as something you know, doesn't attack them. Look at, look at down in here. I've got one, two, three, four on that vine. A mess down in there. Got some good ones. They're all over the place, well, this is, which is really great. And the onions have plenty of nice green tops, but they're just looking really bad. I'm going to wind up pulling a bunch of those, too. Some of them have really shriveled up to nothing. I don't know. What a miserable garden season this has been. All right. Let's see what these two radishes are going to taste like. At least one. If this one doesn't taste good, I'm not going to eat the other one. Hmm. Not bad. Mm. I take all of those out of my room. Really hot. Last night. Mm. Woohoo! It's warm. Not a real true radish taste, though. It tastes like a radish, but only in the hot side of the house. Mm. But two is better than zero. Well, I stopped off at my uh, my local Salvation Army the other day again. You know, went in there looking for anything in particular. Nothing struck my fancy. There were a few things, you know, but I just didn't really need another VCR player or stuff like that. Anyway, they did have some albums there, and I had a I, I got looking at them. I said, "Wow, this now this is kind of cool." You know, sooner or later, I'll have my own room in this house or or an outside uh, building of some sort where I can move all my radios, all my stereo equipment, and you know, where I can play my records and uh, all sort of things, you know, all sorts of things that work on radios and whatnot, and the wife can have her house back, you know. <laughs> anyway, the big, the, the, all this stuff will be going out there, so I'm just basically collecting it, and hopefully I'll live long enough to do all this. <laughs> anyway, the Big Band Encore had four records, and they're in pristine condition. Beautiful, just just really, really good albums, you know. And another thing they had in there was a Reader's Digest. They sing the songs, which uh, is an eight-record set, I believe. Yeah, it's an eight-album eight, eight album set. And that was another one that's in pristine condition. Even the box is in great, great condition. So there's hardly any marks on it whatsoever. And uh, that there... Yeah, it's got eight album, eight, eight albums in it. So I got that. None of these have a, not one micro scratch on them. And then the last thing I bought, uh, this album, the only thing wrong with it was the cover was bent. I don't know how that cover got like that. I'm going to have to glue it back together on the corners. It's kind of interesting that the cover got bent like that, but the albums are in perfect condition. Two albums set, Diana Ross's Greatest Hits. And I sings the greatest hits. And I'm, I'm telling you, she, it's just Endless Love, Theme from Mahogany. Uh, reach out and touch me uh, Just really really good stuff ain't no mountain high enough. She you know at one time. She was like my all-time female singer Then she got on the dope, you know at the airport where she got arrested and all this crap You know and my image of her just went right in a tank Sorry situation, but anyway, I still love her singing. She, she's a, she's a great great singer and I was real happy to get this a two album set so anyway, all these albums came to uh, about 57 cents a piece. Good deal all around. And then I saw you the Here's one of these albums, uh, one of the albums from that uh, they sing the songs Reader's Digest set. We got old Engelbert Humperdinck here.
Well, I'll tell you what, that's really good stuff. I've decided that I want an electric smoker. Uh, we had a smoker that took the uh, hickory wood and we went through so much wood and then it became difficult to get and everybody wanted a fortune for what was available. And uh, what I've done here is I've got my old buddy Ethan, our grandson, and he's going to take, he's going to, he's putting it all together for us. He's going to take care of it. And uh, I, I bought this uh, thing at Home Depot. I don't usually shop at Home Depot, but they said they had the Master Built, and that's the brand I wanted. Uh, the uh, Lowe's, where I normally shop, they do not have Master Built. And I went with the Master Built Pro. The reason being is it's. Uh, it only has two pieces that can break on it. I like that. I originally thought, well, I'll go with the one with the digital display and remote control and all that. Then I got thinking. I said, you yeah, know, I don't need all that crap just to smoke some ribs. And I went online and some of the people said that the, the master built uh, digital display units and all that stuff, they weren't waterproof. And if, it gets, if, you know, if you're smoking a, a turkey or a chicken outside or something or, or some ribs, and a shower was to come up and you were out in the yard or downtown doing something while your meat was smoking, the water would get in there and cause it to rust. Uh, there were several reports of that thing rusting, and I said, well, I don't need rust. You know? So I decided to go with this. There's only two things that could possibly break on this thing. The gauge right here in the front, the heat gauge. Where did the heat gauge go? Where? You said here it is right here. Yeah. This little old heat gauge right here that goes in the center of the door like that. And the electric heater you know that that make that burns the wood that's the only two things you can break and I can easily replace them you know it's the old story the more you have on, on anything whether it be a stereo a car or a smoker the more little gizmos and gadgets you have the more that can break so we're gonna get this thing back together I mean get it together today and then we're gonna go ahead and season it and I haven't read about the seasoning procedure yet but I think it's something like it takes three hours four hours you you heat it all up and then like the last hour you put some wood in it to get it seasoned. I don't know. I'll read all the uh, all the ins and outs here. Meanwhile, Ethan's going to slave away over here. Well, Ethan did a good job. He's got, you know, the only two parts, like I said, that are breakable on this are the gauge and this heating element down here uh, in the bottom that heats up the, uh, I, th I don't know, I think this is the water. I'm not sure which is which yet. I haven't read all the instructions. This might be the chips. Where the chips are put, or this might be where the chips are put. I don't know. We're gonna get. We're gonna go ahead and season this thing in a few minutes. And uh, the way you season it, according to the instructions, you get this thing out of here. I don't want to cook that. I better look and see if there might be another one in the rear. But anyway, the way you're supposed to season it is you turn it on medium for three hours, and then after soaking a cup of wood chips, whatever kind you like, in water for about 30 minutes. Then you put the wood chips in there for the last 45 minutes and then the thing is seasoned. Now the, re the way you set the medium is right here on the electrical cord. You just turn the old dial. Here's the, uh, let's see, where's the, there's the arrow right there. You just dial it into where it says medium and that's it. That's pretty slick. That's all there is to it. Two parts that, uh, that are both replaceable. That's what I wanted. Simple and easy. Now up in the right hand uh, inner corner up there is a bent hole for the smoke where it just sort of lets it drift out nice and easy and down here at the bottom we have a uh, let me back up a little bit we have a pan that catches the grease that runs down through that hole right there it runs down in here and all we have to do is pull out the pull out the little drawer you know it's not what I call you know, super duper made you know like uh, you would get back in the 30s and 1930s and 1940s I mean it's just you know it's cheap uh, some of the parts are made in China and all that jazz, so you know, of course, it's going to be cheap. But this is a really good, uh, really good smoker. My friend has one. He said he loves it. He said he, he said his old smoker with all the wood and everything. He got rid of that thing, went with the electric, and he said he's very happy to have it. And this is the one that he recommended. I said, okay, what the heck? I'll give it a shot. All right, the light is on. She set the medium. Now we wait. Uh, two hours and 15 minutes and then we'll go ahead and put a, a cup of chips in the hopper and then wait another 45 minutes and then we can start smoking. I walked by a pickup truck of uh, one of our grandsons the other day and I just I was walking the dogs and I happened to look in the back and there sat this realistic stereo receiver. It was a S, model STA 46 
anyway, I, it was just laying in there and it was wet from the rain. And I said, hmm, I wonder if that thing can be salvaged. You know, well, I looked at the cabinet. Of course, the cabinet, it was just torn up all the pieces, as you can see. It's just really bad shape. Both sides are like that. Well, I got talking to my grandson about it and he said, yeah. He said he got that out of an old garage that was half fallen down. It had been laying in there for years. It had the power cord cut off and all that stuff. So I said, well, I said, well, I'm taking that thing. He, he said, I was going to give it to a friend, but that crapped out. He said, I just sort of just left it in the back of my pickup. And I said, well, it's mine now. So I spent, you know, you know, some time trying to get this thing to, to play. You can imagine what the rest of it looked like just from, you know, just from the top here. Well, it turned out all it really needed was a good cleaning and a spray down into each of the knobs. Uh, I don't know why it had the power cord cut off. I, don't, I can't figure that one out. But anyway, all the knobs are missing. I'll have to come up with some kind of knobs for it. But once I cleaned it all and got everything, you know, the knobs were frozen, every one of them, from being in that garage all those years. But, they, you know, they came, you know, a little WD-40 and uh, a little, little time and effort, and they came out pretty good. So this is what we have now. What's your destination? There's always a Super 8 nearby. And that's my one dollar speaker I bought at a flea market the other day. <laughs> super destination, extra super. West, on a plane bound It's pretty darn good, huh? Plays good, doesn't it, Grandma? You like that, don't you? Yep. Blessed Mother. Yeah. It's not the most expensive stereo unit, but all the lights work on it. And uh, I owned out the power transformer and a few other things and found out they were good. And I said, shucks, we're going to put the power to this baby. So we did. I'll wind up putting a new power cord on it. But it's, uh, it's in pretty darn good shape, I think. Overall, I'm going to go ahead and shine up the front and make it a little better. It's kind of dirty in the front. This one has the... Uh, those Darlington type of power amps, they're called the STK-015s. And there they are, the STK-015 power amps. I gotta do a little cleaning down in there. I'll give this thing a good washing out with, you know, spray cleaner and alcohol and get her looking real good. She's gonna play good, what the heck. Tuning meter works, the lights all work. It's just an AM FM receiver with all the different inputs in the back. Cheap, but it's not bad for free, okay? To go. Can't complain about that. Well, the old hickory chips have been soaking in water for 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do now, if I can get this piece off there, there we go. We'll go ahead and open up this door. See what see what happens. Open up the other door. And we'll go ahead and take the lid off of this. Take the thing. I'll just take the whole take the whole dumb thing out here. Pretty hot. Oh, the lid's hinged. I didn't know that. How about that? Now we'll go ahead and throw our chips in there. Screw them around a little bit. Now we'll stick them in there like that again, right on top of that old heater. All right, the chips are in, and now we wait 45 more minutes. Then I think we can start cooking. Now what I'm going to have to do now is get the old ribs ready and the chicken. All right, we got our pork ribs in there. I should say my pork ribs. Nobody wants them but me, I guess, and my son-in-law. And all the little uh, chicken breast strips that my wife wanted. And uh, our grandson, John, the cruddy kid, he wanted those. So now we're just going to go ahead and let them smoke for two hours at 225 degrees. Then we'll come back and look at them. Well, the old smoker got a little dirty on the inside, but it did its job. Especially down here where the uh, where the wood chips go in. They, uh, I don't know how many's left in there. Yeah, nothing but charcoal in there now. But they said it would get really black on the inside and pretty dirty, and it did. I got to empty the water. Let's go see how the ribs turned out. Well, they turned out pretty darn good, I'd say. Really good. We have more ribs in here, and then we've got three packages of chicken strips that the wife likes. She doesn't like the ribs too much. We have some baby back ribs that I'll be cooking next time, with more chicken probably. So that's how that turned out. I'm pretty happy with that so far. It sure smells good. 
And it sure tastes good too. I've been gnawing away on these things. These are really, really, boy, they, they taste good. I want to improve the barbecue sauce on them though a little bit and uh, make it. We used some KC Masterpiece and I mixed in a little hot sauce with it and a few other things. Tastes good, but it needs a little bit of improvement. Other than that, we're in great shape. This, that, I like the smoker. Good, good little machine. Alright, we are in the competition area of the Hampton Hotel or the Hampton Inn. Same place we were last year for the uh, for the Taekwondo uh, District Karate Championship Tournament. And the competition will begin in about, about 45 minutes, I would say. And then I'll start filming it, which you will see next time. Until then, this is John.